Hello all, this is Halloween, and if you love cemeteries and haunted history as much as I do, you may want to subscribe because I'm going to be taking you somewhere new every week. In today's episode, we will be heading to Niagara Falls once again to visit a very beautiful Catholic cemetery called St. Joseph Cemetery. This cemetery was established in 1920. Enjoy. We're here at St. Joseph's Cemetery in the beautiful Niagara Falls, New York. Let's go in and see what we can see. This one is right off the main road, so it's a little noisy up front. Once we get past the front to the back of the cemetery, it'll be a little more quiet. It's a beautiful, ornate Catholic cemetery right here in Niagara Falls, New York. You can just see the beautiful detail on all of these memorials. And I'm gonna take a lot of photos in here, but also walk with you a bit. Let's see what it says over here. Oh, look, a hearse. That's a cool looking hearse. It's a Cadillac. All right. Oh, this is just rules and regulations. The mausoleum's open between eight and 4 p.m. 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, so I thought this would kind of be a historic sign, but it's not. It's just talking about leaving of flowers and, and what the rules are for the cemetery, which you should always follow and abide by. And it's mostly in relation to those laid to rest here, what the family can and cannot do in regards to their grave sites. So, It says it's private property, but the gates are wide open, so. It's not that private. Let's go take a look at some of these beautiful memorials. One over here caught my eye right as I was walking in. There is one famous person buried here. He was a major league baseball player for the New York Giants. And his name was Sal the Barber Megley. So we'll be looking for him. Look how pretty this is, the detail. <laughs> the details in the engraving on the headstone, that's just beautiful. And this is a mother, father, and the son. All together in one plot here. I'm going to have to look up and see if the Catholic have any um, specific burial practices because I'm really getting into that these days, learning about different burial practices for different denominations of religion. Isn't that beautiful? Most of these are images of Jesus, Mary. You know, very Catholic. That one's beautiful, the way it's engraved into the headstone. There's a lot of that here. Very ornate, detailed engraving on these headstones. I'm going to take some photos. As you can see, look, a lot of large monuments. There's some mausoleums we're going to go check out just over there on the, on the side of the cemetery. There's a Buscemi plot here. You know the comedic actor Steve Buscemi who basically just plays Steve Buscemi in all of his roles. I'm wondering if this is any relation to him, his family. There's a Charles, Maria, Leonardo, Grace, Giovanna, Thomasina, and a Peter... Uh, Pitero, Bashimi, all buried here. Pretty cool. <clears throat> now a lot of these headstones are similar in the way that they're, you know, engraved and similar. 
depictions of the Virgin Mary, Jesus, and all of that. So I'm going to really focus on finding the more interesting ones, maybe the more intricate ones, so I can take pictures that, um, that are different, maybe something you've never seen before, because there's that in every, just about every cemetery you go into, there's something really unique and different. And I see that this cemetery is going to offer a lot of that as well. It looks like a bonsai tree over there. It's a cool tree, whatever it is. So I'll give you a little, a little lesson right now. My dad called me recently and he was asking me about footstones because for years he's been visiting my Mima at her gravesite on Mother's Day and her birthday. So he asked me, he called to ask me if a, where a footstone was placed in relation to a body, a casket that's beneath the ground. So a footstone, I thought it kind of <laughs> explained it in the name, but a footstone is placed at the feet of the casket. So when you're visiting your loved one, the body isn't actually laying underneath it. The feet are basically underneath the footstone and the casket is placed there. So in this particular, on this particular plot, Miss May Laverty, her head would be somewhere around, around here probably, depending on how tall she was, I guess. But her head would be up here above her footstone which is right over here so just so you know if you're visiting a loved one and they have a footstone you'll know where the face is if you wanted to hug or kiss or lament over their actual where they're laid to rest look at these mausoleums aren't they cool I gotta go take a peek inside some of these. I just walked through a spider web. <laughs> Be careful about that. <laughs> kind of looking around, not paying attention. And I walked in a spider web. <laughs> and I'm wearing spider web fishnets. So I hope they don't get confused and think I'm their web. And just try to stay on me. <laughs> All right, I got this one here. We have six family members laid to rest here. Very pretty. On the crosses it says Angelo Rotella. This is the Rotella family in here. Very, very nice. I love this. These old yellow bricks are so cool. These Old yellow bricks really constructed a lot of Ybor City and Tampa. I don't really know the history behind the yellow bricks, but I think they look really cool. When houses are constructed of them or old historic buildings or even mausoleums in this case. But I think that's a really beautiful brick style. Ooh. kind of see in there that's a big one. Oh, it looks like there was some damage to the lower left um, insert there you can see it kind of wow kind of fell apart there are several inserts in this mausoleum it looks like several for the whole family you know what it is Rather than being marble on the sides, it looks like wood and wood rots, you know? Um, I think when you are placing your loved ones in a mausoleum, it really needs to be marble or concrete so that it doesn't rot like that. And I'm sure these roofs get old over time and water probably ends up seeping in. This is a looks to be a very old mausoleum. 
um, the paint on the doors is kind of chipping off. It says Familia Chiavone. Chiavone. I would imagine too there's a lot of, it looks a lot of Italians are, are laid to rest in here. Italians, maybe even some uh, Spanish, but it looks mostly Italian to me. And Italians have some of the most beautiful cemeteries because of all of the, the statues and um, different depictions of Christ and angels. Look at this here. This mausoleum is huge. Beautifully landscaped. Can you even imagine having this kind of money? I mean, this costs more than my house, easily. <laughs> more than two of my houses, maybe even three. I mean, just to rest eternally in it, you know? But it's beautiful. It looks like people come and maintain it regularly. It has, I think, hydrangeas here outside of it. Oh, look, lots of inserts, your own family mausoleum. Several members of the family buried here are laid to rest here, I should say. Not buried, but four. Looks like 16 on each side. 16 family members on each side. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? A couple of them are cremated and just left atop this um, really pretty um, table that's in there. That is just awesome. Very nice. That's a rich family. It says IHS, that reminds me of a high school logo. Something high school, but Amendola Saluri. Must have been a very prominent family. Here in the falls, De Munda Dominiani. Look how pretty that tree is. Isn't it so pretty? Go in there, babe. These trees are beautiful. You can't go in there. It's locked, it's a family mausoleum. You can go in those mausoleums. Let's see. Ooh. Uh -huh. Ooh, very decorated in there. Pretty. They've got the uh, resurrection of Christ there. When he's carrying his own cross. Virgin Mary. It's like baby Joseph, Mary Joseph, and baby Jesus. And then a grown Jesus up there. Again, a lot of inserts in, in this family mausoleum. Okay. 20 inserts in this one. So, whoever went first had a lot of money and paid for this mausoleum for their whole entire family for years to come. At least 20, so that's, you know, a couple generations maybe. Yeah. This is really pretty. This monument here. Di Spaconi. I gotta take a picture of it. It's beautiful. The side of this mausoleum has some cracked headstones that were probably on the grounds at some point somewhere but they've been laid next to this mausoleum Let's see the name is it's the mina mausoleum which looks like it's had some damage because it's just boarded up in the front um yeah if you want to see another example of a beautiful Italian cemetery. Watch my video on the La Union Italiana Cemetery in Tampa and you'll see what I mean in regards to the ornate design of 
Italian headstones and just their style of burial. I think it's really pretty. Really pretty. We went to another one too where Jackie Gleason is buried in Miami. You might want to check that one out. I don't know if y'all are fans of the King of Queens, but I found a, a Di Maria. <laughs> uh, there's a, there was an episode where the Di Marias were in town and Doug's mom was friends with the Di Marias and they had to go see their kids Christmas performance and Carrie was like, who is Lou Di Maria? <laughs> and they were trying to like get pregnant at the time so she was all pissed off that she had to go to this uh, kids performance when they're trying to make a baby <laughs> and they were sleeping in her office rather than in their own bed here's some really old headstones which is exciting let's see kind of kind of read Nato, I think that means born, 1887, and then Morto, death, died, um, 1922. I can read a little bit of Italian. <laughs> But it shows you how well kept the cemetery is because they just kind of place them where they go. They're just, they're broken apart. They need to be repaired, but there's beauty in that. Yeah. Really pretty old headstones. Here's one from 1925. Giuseppe. It's a Fusca Giuseppe. Born 1848. Us in 1925. Yeah, a lot of the older ones are right in this little area, which is fun. Very cool. They have the neatest little. There's one that tipped completely over. But look at this picture. Is that cool or what? I don't see him. Uh, oh yeah, birth date 1900, passed in 1929. That guy looks cool though. I like that outfit, you know? He looks like a pirate or something. There's a lot of broken headstones over here, older ones that just, you know, during, over the test of time, you know, it just weather conditions and what have you it'll break them down sometimes these pictures are just awesome look at this born 1895 passed in 1928 a really pretty lady Michelina for Gucci. Yeah, these are really pretty. Real pretty. So this cemetery goes way back. <laughs>
there are some DeSantis's laid to rest here. My husband thinks maybe relative to Ron DeSantis, our governor in Florida. I'm not sure, but he does have some family, he was saying, in Philadelphia or somewhere in Pennsylvania. So that's not too far from New York, so it's very possible. He's a descendant of these folks here. Now there's an area here in kind of a downtown historic, kind of a historic downtown Niagara Falls that is called Little Italy. So I think the population of Italians here in Niagara Falls was pretty, um, and probably still is today, very dense, you know, with Italian Catholics in this area. That's what I'm gathering anyway. There's a Syracuse over there. I didn't realize that was an Italian name. Reading all these names almost makes you hungry for Italian food. I saw a ricotta over near the front. <laughs> and I'm like, I love that cheese. It's just a really beautiful walk through this cemetery. The weather's perfect today. So I really couldn't ask for more. Look at how pretty. The family has planted these gorgeous flowers next to their departed and it just makes it look so nice. And there's a bumblebee right there. Another thing that I've noticed in Italian cemeteries is that everyone's kind of real close together. All of the grave sites are packed real close together and makes it look really beautiful but I think maybe even signifies that they're just all one big family after they pass away. You know, Italians are very family oriented and very close while they're alive, very close knit as a family, most of them. And they're close here in death, you know, after they depart, they're still very close but it's very well done because when you look at it from the street it looks like they're just all in here crammed in but look at nice long pathways everything's in perfect alignment and it's just really really stunning i gotta get over to these mausoleums because i definitely want to check them out this is a lucia or lucha sessioni our Sison, born March 1st, 1889 and passed in 1960. Now, I just wanted to cover this because that name is Madonna's maiden name and could be related to this Lucha Sissoni. Just food for thought. I'm not sure. Maybe. There's a Cacciatore over there. Here's something different on the Marino headstone Archangel Michael Saint Michael Michael the Archangel and then over here Critelli beautiful Maria SS del Grazia we've arrived at the niche one of them there's like three large uh, mausoleums full of niches in here. I just wanted to go in and see the beautiful stained glass. Look how beautiful statues are in stained glass. The Pope. Very detailed. I love how they always have these high back chairs. You can just come and spend time with your loved one. It's 
It's very warm in here. I think the air conditioning is broken. <laughs> But heaven is very well air conditioned. <laughs> Beautiful stained glass again here. More niches. You just walk straight through to the other one. Really pretty. go see this other niche straight across here there was a family in there or just a couple in there um so kind of put the camera down for a minute but i just wanted to see all the stained glass it's always so pretty this is another little area it looks like you can have services for your loved ones in this in this niche here it kind of overlooks the cemetery which is really cool Very pretty. See what I mean? How precise these rows are. It's almost like being in a national cemetery with the military, you know, it's just, it's so professional and so well done. Here's some more DeSantis. Right next to a Callie James. Not spelled like my name though. <laughs> a lot of DeSantis is in this cemetery. DeLuca, Marino, Martinez. Now I've seen Polish, Irish, of course, Italian, and Hispanic in here. I think that those are the parts of the world that are really more Catholic, the most Catholic. A lot of Europe is, is Catholic. Well, we didn't find Sal, the major league ball player but this is a gorgeous cemetery so if you're in the niagara falls area and you like cemeteries and um really ornate and beautiful headstones and just taking a nice walk on a beautiful day that's cool i don't get a lot of those in florida you will love this cemetery um so i highly recommend it and uh that does it for this one i gotta charge my equipment and i'll see you at the next one Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you loved today's episode and the cemetery. I thought it was a very beautiful cemetery. Of course, I love the Catholic cemeteries with all the depictions of Christ, Michael the Archangel. We saw Mary and Joseph. It's just always very religious as far as that goes. You're not going to see a lot of headstones with just random statues and things like that it's all very religion oriented in a catholic cemetery and i did look up their burial practices it's very similar to the christian faith as far as their burial practices go they do believe in embalming they do believe in burial more so than cremation however over time cremation has become more accepted but when you do cremate it needs to be in a niche in a mausoleum or something to that effect. Many years ago, they believed that in order for the body to resurrect, that it had to remain intact. And speaking of resurrection, they do hold a mass, a service on the day of the memorial service, and it focuses on the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. Uh, prior to that, the day before the mass, uh, the family will hold a gathering, uh, either at the family's home, at a church, where they all kind of pray together. You know, they pray over the departed and, and things like that. So it's very, very similar to the Christian faith and, and their burial practices. That does it for today's episode. 
If you haven't already, please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video, and I'll see you next time.